Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. This is just the previous video, but a lot quicker. Um, I asked a question at the end of my last video, whether you want to see sped up versions, and I got a response straight away saying yes. Um, typically, we just want to fly through and add stuff. I will continue to do longer videos for the people that do want them, but I'm going to try and do a quick version and a long version of both of all videos for a bit, um, or on select videos and see how it goes. But not to drag this on, let's crack on. So we are doing the animation starter pack in Unreal 5.4 or 5.1 onwards. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to grab the animation starter pack and as you can see it's only for 5.0 5.2 but it's not actually, it's lying to you. Add this, add this to your project. Now you'll need to tick this box and select your project um, but you, you should know that. So it says 5.4 isn't available, so I'm going to select 5.2, add that to my project. And have I picked the wrong project here? Yep, I have. So I'm going to select 5.2, add to project. That is then added to it. Uh, what you're going to need to do is go to your animation starter pack. And I'm just going to use the animation starter pack character, which is the blueprint class. So that's fine. I'm going to open that up. Pin that to the top. Come on, don't fail me now. Pin that to the top. Go back to my map. I'm just going to change my world override to use the pawn class UE4 ASP character, which we've just opened, which is this one. And you can see we've got some issues here where stuff's not working. So what we'll do is this is the old legacy system. So we will add an event begin play. And we're going to add the enhanced... Um, input system so we need to get an enhanced enhanced um, local player subsystem which is this one we will do an is valid from this to make sure it is before we continue is valid connect that up and if it is valid we're going to add ma we need to drag off this to be honest drag off your subsystem and add mapping context now because i've used um, a first person template as my base i should have mentioned that we are going to use the first person template as a base um obviously th the first person template of version 5.4 and 5.2 5.3 whatever uh, comes with a mapping context already so we'll just steal that to make things a bit quicker so if you click on your mapping context here you will see imc default select that if you're interested to see what keys are set up in that, just go to browse and then open that file and you see which keys are set up. Um, and that's pretty much it for add, adding the um, enhanced input. Input. So that's pretty much that. Obviously, that's not going to fix all of our issues. Now, the, uh, the movement used to be move forward and move right. These are both now under the input action uh, move. And the way we get access to um, these X and Y values is going to be through the action value. So we'll right click that and split it. And if I remember rightly, it's going to be the Y for the move forward and the X for the move right. Minimize that so it's not as big. I'm going to plug that into this node and then move that up and plug this into this node. Obviously, you can rearrange your stuff to make it look a bit prettier, but in essence of speediness, I'm going to leave this as it is. So if I hit compile and play, I hopefully should have forwards and uh, sideways movement. So that's all fine. So just to recap there, the X is going to be your right vector and the Y is going to be your forward vector. Next, we'll do mouse input. So again, this is two separate inputs, but now has been changed into input action look. So we'll again make a bit more space to plug these in together. Again, action values here. We're going to split that struct. Now the Y is going to be your pitch. And the X is going to be your yaw or your, however you pronounce it. Connect these two together, hit compile, hit play, and if I move the mouse up and down, 
I'm getting exactly what we want. Um, by the way, if you want to flip, if you want to invert your um, your movement, what you can do is you can times that by negative one, and it'll just flip it. Um, so that's absolutely fine. So that's mouse done. Next is going to be jump. Really easy because there's already a jump function. Input action underscore jump. When triggered, we want to jump. And when complete, we don't want to jump. That's jump complete. And then for crouch, this one we do actually need to make. So what I'll do is I'll come up to my mapping context, click on this little magnifying glass, double click that, go to my mappings, add a new mapping, click on the drop down and click on creates new asset, input action. If you go to first person and inputs and actions, you'll see all the other ones that come with the first person template. Select one of them and then just change the name from like shoot in this example to crouch. Hit save and then make sure you drop down on this crouch and select a key. So I'm going to select keyboard and I'm going to select left control. Hit save, close my defaults, come back down to where I've got crouch. Right click, input action underscore crouch. Again, similarly to jump, triggered is going to set crouch and completed is going to uncheck crouch. Hit compile, hit play. And now we've got a character that can move all the way around, jump and crouch. So that's all sorted. And next we just need to fix the weapon because as we walk into this weapon here, uh, it doesn't actually do anything. You can see it says failed in the top corner. So what we'll do is we'll select the gun in the level, go to edit in your outliner, go to full screen this, and we'll just look for some first person references. So obviously this was set up with the first person in mind. So the references here and here are set up for first person. We just need to change them to the UE4 ASP character. So from other actor, you want to do a cast. Cast to UE4 ASP character, just like that. Drag off that, promote to a variable. This variable we're going to try and plug straight into this little node down here at the bottom which will go to your add weapon component and then this get children component requires the mesh of this. Now first person mesh was the name of the mesh on the first person but now when we drag off this we want to do get mesh. You should see that as a blue little widget at the bottom. Select that, plug that in and then finally connect this execute node back up. Um, what you can do is you can rename this cast to from first person character to uh, UE4 ASP uh, character failed. So then you know when that fails. So that's pretty much it for that bit. Compile, save. So you'll be able to pick up the weapon now, but you won't be able to fire it. Um, so what we need to do for that is go back to the content folder, go to FP, nope first person blueprint and weapon component open that up and then similarly you'll see some first person references that we need to change so what we'll do is we'll delete the cast and the variable and we'll do from here cast to ue4 asp character complete that promote this to a variable so we've got a reference to it Again, change the first person mesh from the UE4 ASP character to get mesh, just like that. And then we'll connect that mesh up to the parent. We'll connect these up here. And somewhere else, we need to find out what do we need to do here. So we're adding the mapping context here. So this is looking for the first person character reference that no longer exists. So we'll drag it in our UE4 ASP character reference. Uh, that'll all work fine. Notify the animation instance that we now have a weapon. We no longer have that animation instance because it was for the arms to know we're holding a weapon and to update accordingly. We don't have any of that, so we can delete that. And then same again down here at the bottom, play montage that contains our first person weapon fire. We no longer have that, so you can get rid of that. Hit compile, none of this will complain anymore and you should be good to go. And then when you press shoot, your, uh, your shoot's already set up for you.
The only thing to do now is set up a grip point on our UE4 ASP character, so then when this socket tries to attach the gun to our hand, we have a grip point to attach to. So I'm just going to copy the word grip point, now it's highlighted, um, just so then I don't have to type it in and potentially make a spelling mistake. So I'll save the weapon component, close that, we don't need that anymore. What we do need to do though is go to our animation starter pack and go to our UE4 mannequin, go to mesh and open up the SK mannequin. So you'll get obviously this window here. I'm going to do a preview animation for idle and rifle hip. That's the one that is typically going to be um, used straight out of the bat. I'm going to hit pause on the timeline just so the character's not wiggling whilst we're trying to adjust this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find hand R, hand underscore R, uh, which will be this hand here, which is where the gun's going to attach. Right click on hand R and I'm going to add a socket. Obviously I'm going to double click on this socket or press F2, up to you, just to rename it. Paste in your grip point name or type it in exactly case sensitive, just like that. We've now got a grip point. So the gun will attach, but it'll look terrible. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the grip point. We're going to right click and add a preview asset. And then just type in um, FP gun or SK. It'll come up either way. And you can see now that the gun is attached, but it's wrong. So what we need to do is just rotate this socket until it looks better. So I'm going to rotate the socket 90, maybe 80 degrees, something like that. And then using the move tool, I'm just going to move the gun to a point where it looks a bit nicer. So just move it around until you're happy with it. Whoop. So I'm going to pull that down a little bit. So the fingers through that trigger hole. Then this hand looks a little bit weird now, so I'm going to pull it back. This this mesh and this gun isn't perfect. Um, let me maybe rotate it to that 90 point. Pull it back like that. This is really quick and dirty. Obviously, spend some time on this, but once you're happy with it, um, hit save. And you should be good to go. So if we press play now... And you can see the guys all sound, it's all working. We'll run into the gun. The gun attaches where we expect. And apart from me deafening you with that extremely loud firing sound, everything's working as it should do. So you should be good to go now. Um, in my previous video, I did mention that I, f I wasn't sure if the character bends. Um, I will link a link down below to a video by Matt Asplund, I think his name is. Um, where he shows you how to do an animation offset which can create a bend if you need it but at the moment the bullets do shoot where the camera is aiming um, so hopefully that would be cool for you this has been a very quick video I hope that was um, good enough I guess um, if that helped consider giving me a like subscribe if you want to see more and join the discord if you want to chat with me you can pop a comment down below absolutely fine but if you want a relatively quick response i recommend the discord channel thank you for watching and i'll see you in another video